I wanted to give you guys a, a quick Gideon guide that I made that kind of is going to just explain the level of skills, the item build, and um, kind of some of the matchups and how I would play them. And I mean, of course, it's going to be different in terms of who you're playing against. This is going to be more for like uh, not necessarily new players, probably intermediate type of play, as uh, I do think min laners are very strong. They're very dependent on the jungler and uh, just skill level you know, overall. But this should help out um, in terms of how to play Gideon if you just got auto filled. This this can kind of, I think this will help you out uh, a good amount. So um, let's start off with the build. So the current Gideon build is the ability haste build, right? It's it's probably one of the strongest builds in the in the game for mid laners. I think in reality every single mid laner can build this, but it works so well for Gideon due to his insane damage output, relatively low cooldowns by default, and this makes it even worse. And since he takes a lot of mana, Kostka is gonna be monstrous on him, and he just he outputs so much damage. Even going time warp first item, he still outputs a ridiculous amount of damage. Where it benefits you to get the mana regen. And the spam of time warp instead of going to mega costume for the straight up uh, damage proc off the passive. Um, so the build is very low CD. Your entire goal is to be constantly spamming Q and R and B in fights. Your ult is super good and helpful, but don't use it as an engage unless enemy team is CC'd or under pressure. You don't have, you know, I do recommend getting like uh, true silver against some people like Countess. But all in all, I you kind of avoid that now. You're just going to be a Q RMB spammer. Your ultimate is, of course, devastating. It's monstrous, um, but especially late game. You're spamming Q and RMB with like one second delays between each other. So and you're outputting a ton of damage. You're kind of using your ult as a cleanup and getting them through walls, which we'll go through uh, later on. So. Um, Wraith Leggings can be replaced by True Silver if you are the main carry in the game, but I would always try to prevent building it since damage is greater than sustain in solo queue. Crest is optional, time flux, uh, fed ADC, output damage and quickly teleport back to them. Um, and it gives you penetration as well. And Soul Bear for the sustain, chase, and haste. I know I didn't put them here, but it, it would be Soul Bear or uh, time flux as your crest um, for those reasons. So time flux, if you just need to go quickly and you think you can output damage, and then get out but um if you need some more sustain and your team's doing pretty well i'd still i'd stick it to soul bear um so skill leveling i listed the skills here uh to read but on a, it's it's all it's gonna be the same no matter what there's zero reason to really max anything uh to like to max e or rmb first always q max always rmb and always e and then um your ultimate whenever you have ability to level up your ult so of course we're gonna go through kind of just some like gameplay explanation of the passive. So a lot of times when you're in lane and you're poking, you want to proc the passive. So the passive starts by if you hit them with a skill and you hit a basic attack after, I think within three seconds, then you get them slowed. <coughs> Excuse me, you get them slowed and you do damage over time as long as you have vision and they're in range. As soon as you if they're close and you go behind a pillar, you'll lose that. But it does a ton of damage. It's really good for poking and trading. Um, so you want to take advantage of your passive in general, but of course early game. Um, the Q ability, massive damage, AoE, easy to hit, it's bigger than it honestly is. Um, and it's a pretty simple to cast. Um, you have to be careful though for situations like Decker, for example. You could Decker can jump while in the circle. She can jump and dodge the the ability. So I think the damage is directly on the crashing of the rock. Um, even if you jump above it, the rock won't do damage to you. Um, so you can damage it over walls, over fang walls. Uh, it, it is something that you do have to work on with Instacast and Smartcast and all that. Since I've learned it, I run Instacast, but I could definitely see like Smartcast being the main priority of, of Gideon, I think in general, you could easily tr go Insta or SmartCast, and uh, you probably can be better running SmartCast, especially with the Q ability. That way you're able to hit it through walls. But as you, if you kind of find how you, you decide how you battle, then Instacast, that small difference in hits can, can be, uh, I mean, every game, 0.5 seconds really does matter, you know? Um, so 
I would I would say that when you do uh, try out Gideon, if you go and practice or whatnot, decide on if you want to do Instacast or you want to do SmartCast because this ability can be abused. It feels like the hitbox is much bigger than the circle it gives you. Um, so I would use this to kill all river buffs. It, it's it's a it's a monster ability. I don't think this is actually accurate. After level one, oh yeah, after level one, it is a one hit. So once you get to level two and you get your stats buffed, so on your Basically, on your uh, second river buff, it's going to be a one hit on the river buff. So it's the fastest clear, and you can just teleport out. All right, so next is the E ability. Um, this can be useful and be terrible. You can use it to escape, of course, but if your team, if you're with your team and your team's not next to you, I mean, if your team is basically right next to the teleport and they don't catch your teleport, the enemy team can basically get a free uh, gap close on them. So you have to be wary about it. Uh, so one of the tips and tricks for this ability is if you press E and then like jump immediately after, you get a momentum carry, which will give you further range. Now the E ability is going to slow people. So you can try to, you have to decide on if I make it, if I make the landing closer to the ground, the enemy is going to get slowed, right? But if I make the E landing way above, that slow potential isn't going to exist. When they land, the slow is going to be gone. I think it's a 1.5 second slow or like a 0.5 second slow or something like that. So, and it's not, it's not very great, but in terms of wanting to look at escaping, you know, you have to, you have to think about that. Majority of the times though, you want to get the momentum carry that tends to save you more than the slow. See the jungler landing phase, you should immediately eat. That's true. A lot of junglers now they have gap closes. So as soon as you see them, Fang Mao, Chimera, all those guys, you just want to jump as soon as you see them. Like, you know, you don't, you don't want to try to try to be a uh, trolly or give them time because as soon as they gap close you all they have to do is jump follow you through a portal and they're going to be chasing you you're going to if you try to throw attacks if they throw attacks they're going to melee is not going to have as much of a um a punishment for basic attacks while running while you you're going to you're probably going to get punished you're probably going to die so that's the one tip that i would say in terms of laning phase uh, with your e ability as soon as you see jungler you should be looking at uh eing away all right, so RMB ability. Uh, RMB ability is the meteor throw rock. Um, it's it's pretty good. It, I would say it's good for getting poke to get your passive out. Is what I would say. It's not going to be your biggest damage hitter. It, it's it's somewhat situational in a way. Sometimes I use my Q as the engager because it's pretty dang easy to hit with that. Then I would get a passive, and then I would get the then I'd get the slow, and then I get the easier um, RMB hit. Now, this sounds interesting to say I aim this similar to how I aim my Q. It feels, in terms of the time and delay on it, it feels similar. And when I started taking, uh, Soul Raper told me about this, and when I started taking that into consideration, I was like, you know what, it kind of does. It feels like that. And I think even with the projectile patch, it feels faster. So I feel like I've been even hitting my RMBs a lot more. Um... Right, so that's the RMB ability. So ultimate. So the closer you are, the more pull you'll have. If you are really high up and they are under you, they can easily walk out of it. This is, you got to take that into consideration for Gadget, where Gadget can punish you for being close. So when you're high up, you're kind of trying to peel Gadget out in a way, as well as not getting damaged by her ultimate. Um, so if you have a hard CC team, you could be much safer going high up and having your team CC them in your ult. Um, but all in all, you want to find a nice middle ground when you do ult to be close enough to where you can punish them so your team can get damage themselves in so you can get your q and rmb off and you can cancel your ult um so a lot of times when i see my enemy on the edge of the ult i'll cancel the ult and then i'll throw a q rmb when it's up and i'll I, or i'll basic attack them and i'll get the passive proc and then i can q and rmb them so that's things to consider that you don't have to wait for the ult to do the full damage you can look at if it's almost gone and you see they're just on the edge of the wall i would leave the ult land a basic to get the slow then throw a q or rmb and then usually that's what gets the kill the ult if i kept it staying in the ult i would have lost them um all right so early game strat this is in reality the most important of course you know your early game is very important it's it's what it's what keeps your mental safe and your team going right but it is not the most important because i mean you gotta wait till late game to get all the buffs that stuff is just as important but it's the most in terms of how you play right so a few scenarios right you got the aggressive enemy team uh and they're pushing really hard you want to try to match their push uh the biggest aggressive enemy team or enemy laner you're going to go against is 
probably going to be uh, Belica. Belica is probably the fastest clear in the game. Um, and you want to pay attention to how she's positioning herself. If she's on top of the pillars, or not the pillars, but the higher levels, you can kind of assume she's going to be more passive, right? But when she's on the ground and there's a few minions left, she's going to look at trying to punish you. She's going to walk up to you and try to get you an RMB on you, maybe even a Q on you and get a full kit, right? You got to respect that. But at the same time, you want to just match, you want to match the, the, the farming. That, that is the most important thing, right? And make sure you call your pings. Uh, so you got the aggressive passive with a waste skills on trying to hit you instead of the wave and you could focus on trading damage with them or clearing the wave faster. Um, so Harry, for example, does not draw aggro off of a Q poke, so you might have to eat it, but he does tend to stand still when he Qs, so you could get a free hit. So you take the free hit from the Howie, you land a Q onto him, you get a passive, you might be able to get an RMB on him, he might E you in or out to him, then when you see him ult is when you want to look into escaping, right? with your e so there you get a pretty you could get a very massive uh return you're already going to take some damage but who's going to benefit from the trade more you or him pay attention to health pots you know so that's like as a scenario in terms of what i would say the aggressive passive type of players they're going to look for pokes from far range but they're not going to be too oppressive pay attention to that character itself um so you got the passive these people are extremely passive they're just sitting to farm i say Push the wave as fast as you can and then look at doing some poke and damage. You have your E to escape if you do some some stupid play, some stupid push, you know. Um, and Gideon does do a good job in terms of matching clear and pushing majority of mid laners. Um, they just want to get the damage output, you know, on passive laners. And you want to terrify them. You want to be dominant um, among them, you know. Uh, so quick thing is... Uh, the wave will crash around a minute 22. Wards last 84 seconds. If I immediately put a ward there, theoretically, I may not see the jungler take two camps and then do a rotation to river buff, right? So river spawns at three minutes. Uh, the wave should be cleared about a minute 45, and then you can look at getting a ward down next to two camp at a minute 50 to see the jungler you know, where are they going to go? Are they going to go to blue buff side or are they going to go and try to steal your blue camp, right? That's some something to keep in mind because river buff is super important on Gideon. He uses up a lot of mana and he can easily take river buffs, right? So it is prior. You do want to prioritize it with him because like I said, it's super easy for him to take it. It's super easy for him to have the jungler there and just escape and easily get to tower. So, you know, you, you want to prioritize the river buffs, but you want to also be safe because, hey, if you don't have to E, if you don't have to use abilities or whatnot, I mean, that's more mana for you. That's an, that's a, you get to stay for one more clear. You get to pressure the mid laner. You might be able to stay there for a gank or a rotation. You know, that is important. Um, so you want to bias what side you want to go. Left side river usually is going to have the red buff and jungler is going to be on the red buff side 99% of the time. So I tend to bias right side, unless I have a ward, I want to make sure I can get that river buff as securely and safe as possible to prevent any type of mana loss to keep me in lane, right? So you can look at right lane if you can't get a ward off, because right lane is going to, one, give you a better, it's going to give you, they both technically give you uh, solid teleports, um, but the right side is going to be a lot safer. All right, so the goal is to aggressively rush for level two, right? You want to get your skill before they do in case they want to look at the poking you. That way you can also get your entire kit, right? You have no escape until you get to level three. Uh, but, you know, the chance of a early gank is slim. And luckily for Gideon, you can waste a flash. A blink isn't going to be an issue for you. You know, waste a blink and you still have your E. So it's, it's all right. You know, you can play aggressive level two and try to scare your, your mid laner. Even if and if you can get a bait on the jungler to to gank you, your team now has position of where that jungler is. Maybe your jungler can go and uh, rotate into their jungle and steal. You know, um, so oh sorry. So health pots scale on level. Try to save your health pots for at least level two or three, where you are expecting more trades. Pay attention to your level. A lot of people I'll see at level one, they're throwing a health pot. I'm like I'm not gonna go in on you again. Don't use a health pot yet. Wait till level two, right? Because now I know you're down a health pot. You're not going to heal for as much. Health pots scale with your level. 
you know, and this is for everybody, of course, not just Gideon, but something that I noticed I wanted to share into the early game strat. I mean, this this overall guide is for every mid laner, just biased a bit towards Gideon. Uh, so focus range minions, if they overextend, try to Q or RMB them, uh, look into boxing and landing another skill. Range minions are what's going to do damage to you. They're what's actually going to punish you um, when you, when you do a box. That's why range minions are the first thing. You look. You should look into clearing. Um, I already discussed the rubber buff starting at 3 and how the jungler tends to start at red buff. Uh, punish the enemy if they use their skills, but at this point, mentally think about rewarding yourself. Exactly. like That's it. You want to reward yourself. Think about how you can reward yourself. It's not about kills. The game, you know, it's about... The end goal is to kill the core. You can go 0 and 10 as long as you kill the core, right? Um, so you just want to think, how do I how do I reward myself in a way? If, I, if I'm getting punished, then just farm. If I see, you know, you don't... You have other laners you just need to try your best to not feed or anything right you just want to look at how you can reward yourself uh positively and that includes how you use your mana if they're gonna push up and you think you're gonna miss your q then honestly don't use your q let it come to lane like you know you want to preserve yourself you want to reward yourself the best that you can um uh, so you can look at the pushing wave at one, get a ward of two. I already discussed that above. I did some minor edits initially, and then, so it might be a little bit congested at times. Um, so the mid game strat is gonna just be pay attention to your mana and jungle timers. He uses a lot of mana at mid game. You may may not have Caustica. You will have time warp, which is gonna give you a ton of mana. But once you start spamming it, it, it can get drained really fast. Um, you want to pay attention to Fangtooth quarter of the way there. You want to go back, reset, try to get your jungler to kind of like prioritize it. Because you are, your jungler can easily uh, solo Fangtooth uh, as soon, almost as soon as it spawns. You just got to pay attention to, you know, try to keep pressure in your lane. Keep prio. So that way your jungler can look into doing stuff like that. At the same time, let your jungler know, hey, I may be losing. I'm not, I'm not doing so great. In mid, this person's aggressive. A lot of people don't like to type. And I find that interesting. It's good to know that, hey, I think this mid laner might be better than me. Hey, this mid laner isn't actually that great. Punish him. People don't like to type stuff like that. And I know it's casual, so that's probably it. But it's good to get awareness of, hey, this guy is actually not that great. So he might not be, this not might, might not be his main role. Let's punish him, right? Um, so the enemy has used any other spells looking to punishing them. Um, you can use the center of the mid walls to bait them uh, and then land cues, uh, try to get some RMBs, get some passives in. So um, if you went time flux, you need to poke and double portal for gap closes and checking fang tooths. Um, so getting these is very strong, but at this point in the game, you're probably going to have a lot of team fights. You got to be wary, right? You got to be wary on uh, going over your teammates and then letting your you know, the enemies jump. Uh, to gap close them and you got to be wary on using it the right time you know you have to you have to use it near instant you can try to get poke out as you improve and you understand the character better you know but best thing is to pay attention on using that e as soon as you see a jungler um and here you it, this is at a higher skill level you can look at taking enemy jungle camps if available because now you're getting gold and you're punishing the jungler so like two camps is probably the only one you're really going to take but if you somehow take first tower you see the junglers in right lane or in left lane you can look at trying to prio and uh take some some jungle camps that's going to hurt the jungler and it's going to benefit you you know and it's it's a solo queue game in in a way so you want to get fed. You want to get strong, right? You're going to be the carry. You're going to 1v9. So like game strat, you're just going to punish everyone. At this point, you're probably near full build. After three, four items, you're going to be spamming Q and RMB with one second. Like, you're going to focus on the Q and RMB over and over and over again. Your ult is going to be when there's a major amount of CC. When you see just a ton of CC, a ton of engaging, they're not going to focus you. And they're all grouped up, then you can throw your ult down, and you get you get a clean up off of that. But honestly, Gideon now Q R M B Q R M B. That's your like tire goal at this point, right? Now a lot of people when they go into late game and they're getting prime and whatnot. I used to kind of sit outside, but I noticed that's actually kind of punishing. You can zone out with Gideon, but usually people are pretty tanky at this point. 
that what I like to do now is if I'm if I'm the Fed one, they're gonna kind of focus me instead of Prime. I'm gonna die, and that could cause the the team to lose. I started moving into start the zoning off right with your Q and R and B um, inside pits, and then and then move into pit, and then look at trying to counter the jungle going in. So it's kind of dependent right because you're going to be squishy the jungle is going to try to focus prime but if i can use my e or my e ult right in a good position i can try and pull the jungler back i can cause him to maybe miss a stun maybe miss position himself right and then i can also look at getting everyone inside pit and then looking at ulting it's something that i would honestly say is still kind of depends on the comp and whatnot right in terms of do you want to zone out or do you want to actually sit inside pit if the i like to say that if the jungler is attacking objective you should look at attacking the objective you do a ton of damage you're you're probably throwing 1k damage honestly every time you queue rmb every three seconds two seconds so um that's one thing to, to consider so you know i have moved away from the peeling uh as a gideon because people are tanking a lot of junglers they tend to be tanky they have the gap closed they can dodge you pretty well um, so I feel like zoning has kind of fell off a little bit in terms of for Gideon and in general inside pits. Uh, objectives are so, so important. Unless your jungler goes off of objective, you're staying on objective. And I would say focus objective. Uh, so some Gideon tips and tricks, which I said before, but to kind of reiterate. So Gideon super jump, press E, then immediately jump and you can go further. The momentum will carry you. And once again, this does kind of go into if you want them slowed, you got to aim it closer to the ground. Your landing spot should be closer to the ground. But the momentum tends to be better, especially times when you can use the momentum and they can't. And you can just barely get over the edge and then they can't because you were able to, uh, to use the momentum, right? Um, so getting RMB is honestly similar to aiming Q due to travel time. Although it's faster, but I still say it's uh, relatively the same. Um, if true silver, use your ult and then use soul bear on top of it so you can get the true silver behind the soul bear shield. So that way you have to destroy a soul bear shield, then they have to destroy your true silver shield. So you still will have CC immunity while in it. Um, so ult, wait like 0.5 seconds, then throw your soul bear because it still takes time for your ult to proc. It's a little interesting, but something to consider. Um, so because your momentum carry on the super jump, you can go through gaps or make ledges others cannot. That's something. That's a little bit on the higher skill as you get used to it. So and I mentioned that getting E can be a problem um, for you as well, right? You can cause gap closes for the enemies to get onto your ADC if they can't escape fast enough. Try to use your E away from your teammates, pre preferably. And then your ultimate does damage through walls. You know, uh, so if they're behind a pretty thin wall, you can ult and they can get sucked in. If you're right next to the wall, they'll get sucked in right in the center and they can't escape. So take advantage of, you know, you turn a corner, look into ulting. You might be able to actually get a kill. You might be able to punish them. You might scare them off, give them time for a jungle to come. It's something to consider. So we're going to go through a little bit of some, just like some picks and how I would play into some of these picks. And of course, this is so dependent on, on the, the matchmaking, the balance, the elo. So... Uh, Bellica, she's a bit on the harder side because uh, she's going to beat you. She can and she should be beating you on pressure. So pre-6, your farm. She's going to clear faster. Respect her positioning. If she's on the ground and not on the uh, higher levels, assume that she's going to push. That's just what I've noticed. Assume she's going to push you once she clears out uh, range minions. It's okay to focus on, farm, on, on XP and lose some farm out here. Um, you know, you just... You just want to keep the XP levels. You want to keep the XP. You want to keep the levels. Gold, of course, as important as it is, don't feed. Don't get pressured. Don't lose the back, right? Don't don't lose the tempo. Um, So she's going to poke you with RMB and try to get Qs on you. And she's going to try to drain you by putting her E down. You know, that's what, that's what it is. Uh, and you can take that drone if it's really extended. It's 20 gold. It's worth it. It's almost a minion gold. It's, it's definitely worth it. So post six, dodge the Q, and she's pretty free if you have the mana for it. You can E on top. Uh, you can E on top of her and get an ulti off pretty easily, um, and not get hit by a Q. You know, once again, it's a little bit of a gamble ish because if you don't necessarily know her uh, hitbox on her Q, it can be a little terrifying, right? 
But um, hey, you can output a ton of damage, especially if she if she misses the Q, you should be so aggressive on her. If she misses her stun, you should be hunting her a little bit, right? You got to respect her, though. If, she, if you miss your Q and, you know, you're going to get punished for it. Um, but she should be scared at that point. But a higher tier, they can be aggressive and they're going to hope that they can just keep RMBing you spam thinking you're going to be as aggro. So you got you to gotta respect it at the same time. But dodge a Q, you should be looking at being aggressive. Um, either aggressive in terms of farm and pushing lane or aggressive in terms of punishing her by doing damage to her. Um, so her entire goal against Belka is to not get hit by the Q and don't be low mana. That's kind of it. She's relatively predictable. You know the range of her Q. You kind of know about her RMB spam. You know she's going to push wave up. She's relatively predictable, but she can punish you, especially if you don't see her and she gets you through walls and whatnot. She can be very punishing. Um, but you should be punishing her a lot more into late game. Uh, you know, easy ease engages on top of her and whatnot. Your the current build doesn't necessarily give you too much mana, which is going to be devastating to you when you're low mana. Of course, she's going to output a ton of damage, but something to consider. You know, late game you should dominate. So Countess, I would say, is pretty hard for Gideon. Um, probably the one time you should look into true silver, and I would say just farm. Just focus on farm. Don't even look at punishing Countess. And, you can throw basics at her, but she is just going to run around you in circles. And uh, she's gonna dodge all your abilities. So you wanna you wanna play that safe. Um, her ult cancels your ult. Her Q can escape your pull. It can escape the pull on the ultimate. It can escape your Q. It can be used for dodges. Um, I would just say yeah, match farm with her. But you should tell your jungle to gank. You still pressure her really well. She is very squishy. You know, if you see her use her Q though, you should be aggressive. If she uses her Q, you should be hungry. Dodge her E if you can, but if she uses the Q, hunger, hunger, hunger. You know, you want to feast on her, right? You want to counter the ultimate. You want to feast on her. Um, that's a lot of times you run for level 6 ASAP on her. So that way you can just freaking, you get level 6, she's level 5. All I do is E ult on her, and that's it. I just trade that damage, and she actually should get pretty obliterated. She should get damaged pretty pretty hard. She can't escape it. So she's just going to probably be, and then you can have advantage on tempo, clear the wave. She'll lose farm, and then you get a reset off of it, and then you're going to get a lane above her, basically. And that's going to mess with her. You could even get a kill on her. You could have your jungler there, you know? So, but you, if she uses her Q is when you look at prioritizing her, you know? Um, let's see. So the next one is Faye. Now, I say difficulty is easy, but she does punish you in a way. But you should have faster level 6 clear. And she's just so squishy to where I would say she is punishable. So, far up against her, she's squishy. When she goes to farm, uh, poke with her Q and RMB. Her E is going to have longer range. Um, but she's going to walk towards you to land it. So, telling if she's aggro or passive, that's going to help you a lot. She's passive. It should be the freest Qs. You can tell when she's aggro just by how fat, how often she uses her E on you. And then at that point, you're going to place that Q and RMB in front of her, right? To, to counter the trade a little bit. And then you can use your passive basic to get the slow on her, get some AoE damage. She's squishy. You just got to watch out make sure you got the height on your ultimate when she ults the, the pressure. But all in all, you should be able to dominate her pretty well. Um, but yeah, what I personally like to do on phase is make their HP low. So I would literally just go in. If I'm full HP and she's full HP, I could just happily go in and get an ult on her, get a Q RMB ult, right? And just make her half HP. She doesn't have an escape, right? She might use her ultimate to cancel your ult, but then you kind of just walk out. She shouldn't have the damage. And you're not you shouldn't be low enough for her to chase and, and punish you. Uh, and if she chases behind you, you should have your Q and RMB back up and you can just kind of poke her again until you get to safety. Uh, of course, you got to watch out for your jungler. You're going to have to use your E to engage. So if you need to plan accordingly to where the enemy jungler is. So um, anytime you want to use your E to engage, you need to plan it according to the jungler and the enemy laners, right? In the case they gank you. Because then you'll, you're basically a free kill. Uh, so gadget. I say it's an easy moderate lane. Um, she, at high tier, actually does counter Gideon pretty well. Um, due to her passive shield, she can basically eat a Q and then dodge RMB, but she's there chasing you down to get a Q, you know, Qs off onto you. Um, 
and she can land E's if she knows that she can bait your E out by chasing you. Then you're on a 20 second cooldown, right? And then she can do the same thing because she gets her abilities pretty fast and she can pre pressure you pretty well off of it. That's in high tier play though. But in reality, a lot of gadgets, they don't necessarily do that in mid and low tier. So it's pretty easy. You just got to watch out for level six. At level six, you got to ult above her. I'd say it's a farm lane. You're going to have, you're going to basically push faster than her and then look at rotations you guys will probably be matched in farm she might have a little bit more farm than you but you should be dominating in terms of rotations uh compared to her um that's basically overall i would say with gadget just pay attention to her abilities but she gets them back pretty fast if you don't have your e you should be a little bit scared because of course she can root you um, and if they're a smart gadget they'll take advantage of that so alt higher and then spam your abilities on her uh, all right, so Howitzer. Howitzer's fairly moderate. Um, I would say it's kind of a equal matchup. He's going to have an easier time poking you with Qs. So, like, I if I'm a Howitzer, I'll see a Gideon who's going to use abilities to clear. I'm timing him for as soon as the, the minions make contact, I'm throwing a Q out, right? And then I might throw RMB to kind of zone him off. But all in all, like, it's kind of like... Because of Gideon's pull, it makes his ult harder to hit. But at the same time, you can also escape Howitzer ult. So it's like you want to find the balance of do I look into engaging onto a Howitzer, which is super easy to do from ganks. As soon as you see a, you know, uh, your jungler wants a gank, E above him to dodge the his E knocking you out, and then um, and then ult. If he ults, he'll still get pulled in. And you want to ult at a high high level, like kind of balance it out. And then your jungler should come in and easy kill off of that because he's very squishy. Um, so you need to have more HP when you engage on him because he's going to output a ton of damage still. Combustion is going to be aggressive on you. But, uh, you know, you're going to have faster clear than him. So I would say same thing in terms of gadget. Clear, look at rotations. And if Howitzer doesn't really get too much kills, he's a fairly slow scaler. Does a ton of damage, but he's kind of slow in terms of scaling. Um, so just focus on, on the rotations, I would say, and focus on the farm. Even if he hits you with his Q, like I said, you want to... If you're half HP, you should, that's when you should be terrified and just back. You know, because if he does have combustion, he can poke you out, throw an ult on you. But you should have E to escape it. You know, that's that's where your advantage is against a Howitzer. You can escape any of his his kill potential uh anytime he tries to go it has kill potential on you so the mortgage lane it's a moderate lane uh she's super slippery her e she can get out of your portal but she's squishy you want to match the damage on her if anything if she has a little bit more hp than you that's when you should be scared right her q i i don't i still need to test this but it's hard to, to test her q is a ton of damage so when you think she has her Q up and she's going aggro, you can actually look at an E ult engage on her because when she uses her Q, I think it's only damage on impact of terrain. So if you're up there in the air and she Qs you, I don't think that does damage to you. I haven't been able to really confirm that, but one time I did it and I didn't see damage. So hence why I'm saying this, but it's hard to confirm this. Um, she will basically not hit you with a Q and then you just get, she can only hit you with a, her RMB, her Q is going to be on a long cooldown. Usually you can punish her off of that. So with that, I might be able to honestly make her into into like a moderate easy, depending on how skilled they are in their positioning and how aggressive they are. So, um, so yeah, if anyone has ideas on that, you know, she does have pretty fast clear for what her kit is. And with her kit, she's easily going to be able to Q and E, which is going to give her the fastest clear in the game, actually. I think she has the fastest clear if she's able to get a free E. Um, so, you know, you gotta respect that. And you can, you know, jungle, she's gonna be very easy kills if you have a jungle rotation. But focus on farm. If you see her with E, she's mostly gonna run through minions. Try to look at throwing a RMB and a Q in front of her on top of your minions. You, should, you could get some pretty good damage. Dodge the Q. You dodge one or two Qs, you should actually be very dominant amongst her. Alright, so Wraith, uh, the newer character, kind of what I waited for for this, uh, this guide although i know the guide is is a bit delayed um relatively easy he doesn't have necessarily much in his kit to pressure you focus on farm and then if you dodge if he misses one rmb right early or doesn't get the kill 
he doesn't have anything for 10 seconds. You just pressure him. He's kind of kind of weak. You should be able to damage him pretty well. Easy hits on him, especially level 6. I would say literally all in him level 6 and make his HP low. That way he's going to sit all the way far back and he's going to have to use RMB to clear. Um, if he uses RMB to clear, he might miss it and then lose more farm and they get to put more pressure on him. Uh, pretty easy lane, I would say, you know. Time flux is useful on him because you literally go in, throw damage out, teleport back, then you can go right back in through the same portal and throw more damage out on him. Um, you know, he's pretty squishy. He's an ADC basically. So, you know, I'd say he's pretty easy. Uh but yeah, don't jump against Wraith. This is for everybody. When I see when I'm Wraith and I see someone jump, I just snipe you. Easiest hits of my life, right? Uh so don't jump. Um pressure him by farming quick and then look into landing Q and RMB. This RMB is around 10 seconds early. Uh, stand in front of a minion if he's far range and takes uh oh, sorry uh, 10 second cooldown early and take some damage you can yeah you can honestly sit behind minions and let him hit you one rmb hit and he gets to lose farm if you're pressuring him a hey, i kind of like that trade right <laughs> um but yeah b is level six and all in with him he's an adc he's not really going to escape he's going to be very squishy and you can punish him with once you go all in him you can get a passive hit on him and then a q rmb right just got to be aware of the jungler because the jungler can melt you at that point. So matchup conclusions. Um, you are an artill artillery cannon. You're super easy to farm with and you have a pretty good escape. Um, you just got to farm up. If you can farm up and be comfortable farming the entire game and you have uh, you have hard CC, your aim and whatnot isn't... It's going to be easier to hit, their, you know, to hit your enemies with that. Especially in fights, you can... In fights, it's easier to see where people want to go, where people want to run, right? And uh, you should be able to dominate uh, in general with Gideon. I think he's, he's the best mid laner in the game, to be honest with you. Um, so use your... I don't know what I was supposed to write here. Use my blank and spam Q and RMB. My low cooldowns, I guess. And do not use your ultimate as an engage. Um, you can barely be matched up by someone better than you. That's okay. Just focus on the farm and limit the punishment put onto you. That's it. If you're thinks you're someone's better than you, let the jungler know. And that doesn't mean that you're gonna get ganks. Ganks should only be going into kill potential. They should not be going because you are being dominated. You know what I mean? If they can get a kill off of you, sure. But you are not. What would you say? You don't deserve ganks. You only deserve ganks if you can get kill kill potential. That's it right so if you're getting beat up layer jungler no and say hey focus other lanes or whatnot because uh gideon does have a good scaling and it should be pretty easy for you overall so i wouldn't ever really see a gideon look into complaining you know unless like every lane is losing and you actually have kill potential that's when i would say hey i have kill potential come to me <laughs> uh so just some things to keep notes of uh river buffs are important and super easy to obtain for gideon you know I pay attention to your CDs as well as your enemies. If they use skills first, you can look at being aggressive. But at the same time, you want to match the farm on the wave. Farm is more important, right? If they're able to clear farm and you want to go and clear them, you know, uh, to hit them, they're going to be pushed up on you. They're going to have minion advantage. Then you're going to get punished for it, right? Uh, so pay attention when they come to farm. I'd be able to land a queue while they're walking up to you. Um, and pay attention to jungle rotations with most junglers starting red. Um, wherever your jungle is sidewise will be the opposite side, right? You do want to focus on that jungle rotations, uh, how the, how the jungler, um, what the jungler does. Cause then that also can put you, that's going to help you out on rotations, right? It's going to help you on being safer and help you on being more aggressive, you know, pay attention to that. The, you know, you, whatever your jungler does, most likely the enemy jungler is doing because the red buff and the clear is relatively similar with most jungles right now. Uh, so first, river buff damage just takes one Q and a basic to secure. Otherwise, three autos. Um, and I think it also includes RMB. I think the RMB also takes three autos at level one. If you, if some reason you do that, but you should go Q. So always Q river buff. It's worth it. Um, in terms of making sure you secure it. Um, all right. So that's the end of. The quick Gideon guide. Uh, let me know what you guys think. This is my first character guide. If it was too long, I know I know my videos can be somewhat bit long. I try to short, you know, make them short. But then, man, it just time flies by when you're making them. 
Um, but let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I do stream on Twitch and YouTube at the same time, around 6 Eastern-ish, uh, almost every day. Uh, I make YouTube guides and videos uh, every other day-ish when I can. Um, but yeah, leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy. And let me know in the comments. And then join the Discord if you're interested in asking me questions and join the stream for the, for the same thing. But uh, take it easy. Good luck on your games. I hope uh, this guide has helped some of you. Peace.